All right, hold on just a second. You're telling me Frank Lampard's Chelsea has got 10 points out of a possible 12 out of the Arsenal and Tottenham games? Naughty. What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan, and I hope you lot are doing well. If you're a Chelsea fan, you're probably doing well because Chelsea, Frank Lampard's Chelsea, has just completed the Premier League double over Jose Mourinho's Tottenham. Yes indeed, just glorious scenes at Stamford Bridge. Score was 2-1, probably should have been 2-0, 3-0. Definitely Lo Celso should have been sent off for an absolute abhorrent tackle, but generally a really massive, huge result. Superb to do the double over Tottenham. We're going to be talking about that today, but yeah, I just want to say it once more. I know Chelsea should have won against Arsenal. It should be the league double against Arsenal and Tottenham, but to be honest, three wins and a draw out of the four games in your local rivals is a pretty awesome return for this season. So I'm pretty stoked. We're going to be talking about the tactics, the player performances, what this means going forward. It's going to be an incredibly positive video. <laughs> But let's have a quick shout out for the sponsor today, One Football. One Football is the platform that you should go if you want to get football news, football media, statistics, fixtures, all the interesting stuff regarding the Premier League, football, Chelsea Football Club. It's the best. Go check it out. I've put a link to One Football in the top of the description. Like I always say, I use it. So I'd urge you guys to go check it out. All right, then, let's get into it. Right, so last time out at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium where Chelsea won 2 0, that was regarded heralded as a tactical masterclass from Frank Lampard deploying the free for free and uh, Jose Mourinho switched at half time to deal with it in that game people wondered what's going to happen this game is Lampard going to do that again is he not is Jose going to do it is he not well it turns out they both went for the free back system and on the screen now I'm just going to show you the who scored match center to show you who played where the statistics yada 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 so look at that breathe it in we had Willie Caballero in goal so Kepa yep still dropped which is a massive talking point, obviously. And the left wing back position, the specialist Marcus Alonso, good left wing back indeed. The three centre backs consisted of Rudiger, Christensen, and Aspilicueta. And right wing back was Reese James. The midfield two pot was populated by Jorginho and Kovacic. And the front three was an interesting one. Olivier Giroud earns his start after that superb cameo when he came on against Manchester United, scored that offside goal. Thanks by, interestingly, Mason Mount and Barkley, who were playing more as inside forwards and supporting the midfield. Right then, what happened? <laughs> Right, so the goal scorers for Chelsea were Olivier Giroud and Marcus Alonso, two players brought into the starting lineup for this game off the bench. Giroud's goal was a lovely volley after a succession of attempts on Lloris's goal. I think it was Mount first, then Barkley hit the crossbar. Giroud followed up with a lovely volley. It was a superb goal. The whole move leading up to it was good as well. And Marcus Alonso, granted he faded in the second half, we're going to talk about player performances in just a minute. But he, in the first half, he was immense. He was playing, he played that one beautiful uh, ball along the deck that curled around to basically bypass all the uh, back line of Tottenham. He, he was really, really good. He slowed down, he couldn't defend well towards the end, but when occupying that forward space, boy is he a weapon. And his goal was absolutely lovely. Laid off by, I think it was Ross Barkley, another superb piece of attacking passage of play from Chelsea. Loads of lovely moves, the ball goes across the front line, the final third. Comes up to Marcus Alonso, who's approaching up in acres of space, drills it into the corner. Just lovely. Chelsea massively should have capitalised off their dominance as per usual in terms of finishing. But, you know, you win at home, it's fine. But this is something they still need to look at developing. Chelsea conceded late, in, late on in the second half to make it a sweaty game, as per usual. And then there was a little bit of nerves, but they managed to bring in some game management for the final few minutes. Uh, it was an own goal. It was a little bit unlucky. I think it hit Rudiger um, from Lamella, and Caballero couldn't do anything about it, which I was a bit frustrated of. It was unlucky, but people like Reese James played so well for a clean sheet as did the centre-backs for the most part, and Willie Caballero generally had a good game. I think he had his, like, one signature mad moment when he ran out, but generally he's made a few good saves, and you can understand why he's in goal at the moment. Before I talk about, like, player performances and stuff, Let's talk about the matchups or the, or the way the game went. Chelsea used the flanks very, very well. I think Frank Lampard used players like Mason Mount and Ross Barkley in the front three, inverted commas, because he needed more sort of occupation in the midfield. 
while also switching to the flanks a lot. Um, certainly Marcus Alonso was really, really utilised in terms of receiving the ball out wide and Rhys James was more of a ball carrier because obviously he's got the speed to go up and down the flanks. Shiva actually did set the tone for a man whose run is about as slow as a glacial drip. He did do it from his, like, you know, from his standards, pressing. And he was very, very good, actually, Shiva. So props to him. He really does rally the team when he's on. And he looked a lot better than his last start, I tell you that much. Tottenham didn't actually make any changes at halftime, which I thought they might do because they were under so much pressure. Maybe Mourinho kind of was hoping that Chelsea would burn out a little bit. Um, personally, I thought we'd utilise the subs a little bit better. I always thought Tammy would come on for Giroud because he's not match fit. I guess Willian, I suppose, is a given because Lampard likes him. But I really did think we might see Ruben Loftus-Cheek come into the midfield. But I think even if Lampard was planning on just giving him a two minutes at the end to like you know, sort of remind him what it's like to be on a pitch at Stamford Bridge. That plan went out the window when Chelsea conceded a goal and he probably needed to just keep Jorginho and Kovacic on the pitch, who knew the sort of flow of the game. Right, let's talk about Lo Celso the Butcher. Obviously, it should have been a red card. VAR themselves have made a statement saying, we got it wrong. It just beggars believe. I actually think Michael Oliver is a really good referee. Why, if he went to the monitor and saw that assault, he'd be like, yeah, Red, you're gone, mate, gone. And not only that, he did another high boot, like, a few minutes later that, you know, it would have been a soft red card, but it could have been a red card as well. Another foul, and then got a yellow card for another bad foul. This guy is just, I mean, he's a good footballer. I'm not going to be one of these fans that just be like, oh, we just, you know, get stuck in. He's a good footballer, but my goodness, he's dirty. Like, he, that, he should not have been on the pitch at all. And Chelsea probably could have scored maybe another goal against uh, less men, but we've seen how they find that difficult against Arsenal. But Tottenham are a different side. So yes, I've addressed it. Lacelso, like it, you know, he just should have been off. Everyone knows it. So let's run through player performances. I thought Willy Caballero was very, very good in goal. Um, I think Christensen was pretty good in the mask. Antonio Rudiger was wasn't great for me. Um, he did a couple of wobbly moments. And I know he was unfortunate for the own goal, but he was, you know, he was okay. I probably would have preferred to see Christensen in the middle and maybe Tamori in Rudiger's spot in hindsight, but we won the game, it's over. As Bilicueta missed a consistent as per usual, a bit unfortunate for him to be on the receiving end of that horrendous stamp from La Celso. Um, Rhys James, very good as per, I feel quite bad for him because all this hard work. I know he's playing as more of an attacker almost, but I feel like they just deserve that clean sheet for the defensive work, certainly on his side. Maybe not so much Marcus Alonso, but Marcus Alonso, let's talk about him. He did sort of fade out in the second half, but my goodness, from those lovely cross-field rolling curved balls, to combining well, to whipped volley goals, to winning aerial duels, Yes, he's really like can get turned really easily and he's not good at defending. And when you see that, you're like, well, it's just clearly not good enough for the Premier League. But when you, if you really do utilise him what he's good at, like what Antonio Conte did, he's useful. And at this point, if Chelsea are looking to buy a new left back, you think Emerson might be the one out the door and Alonso might stay motorbike and Alonso might stay for the left wing back option. Jorginho and Kovacic were very good in the midfield, I think both sort of did exactly what they needed to do, combine and transition and play up the pitch. It was um, obviously Mason Mount, Barkley coming in to help. I think Barkley was actually very good in this game, got the assist for the second goal. I think Mason Mount was very good in this game. Um, what he does very well, we all know, is his pressing game. He did that minute one to minute 90 today, superb from Mason Mount. Probably should have got a, um, a goal or an assist at one point, I can't remember which minute it was. Still very, very good. Giroud, Got his goal, lovely. I understand why he came off, he burnt out a little bit, but you know, he did what he needed to do. Superb. Willian came on, um, you know, ran the look to right, but that's pretty much it. Tottenham didn't really look threatening for the most part. It's just Chelsea probably making themselves their worst own, their own worst enemies as per usual. Mourinho did set up in a very negative way, and to be honest, I'm looking at Mourinho and I'm thinking less and less he's not that great a coach. I think he probably could have changed something here to try and get in the game more. Really he relied on Chelsea's naivety, nerves, uh, youth kind of thing and that kind of came into play towards the end. But still, whatever. Chelsea are in fourth place. They are now four points clear of Tottenham Hotspur. 
hopefully more results go their way this weekend. So what does this mean for Chelsea Football Club? I have no idea because loads of teams are going for fourth and fifth now. No one knows what the hell is going on. Is fifth a Champions League spot? I don't know. But what I do know is Chelsea have done the double over Tottenham Hotspur. Jose Mourinho's hot Tottenham Hotspur by student Frank Lampard. It's just lovely, isn't it? And also they've taken four points of Arsenal. That is like a good, memorable London derby season by any standards. Provided, you know, we forget about losing to West Ham. Anyway, what do you guys think of the game? I want to get your thoughts and opinions on this win over Tottenham. Get down in the comments section below. Let me know your thoughts on how the game panned out, player performances, all that kind of stuff. I'm really interested to know. I mean, don't bother saying Lo Celso should have been sent off. We all know Lo Celso should have been sent off. Let's talk about the game. I want to see your thoughts and opinions. Get down in the comment section. And remember, if you've enjoyed this video, guys, please do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you are indeed new. Why not follow me on social media as well, at Football Yannick, on both Instagram and Chelsea. If you come and follow me on Instagram, I often do lives in the evening, sometimes the afternoon. I like talking to everyone about football and all that, so make sure you do come follow me on Instagram, at Football Yannick. That's it for me, guys. You lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.